Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of the Legacy of the Monsterverse Reviews. And in case you're wondering, I'm a bit lazy this time because I didn't put any clips from the trailers in the start of the video, so I'm sorry about that. But because this is the final video today, for or the final um, episode of the Legacy of the Monsterverse Reviews so far, I'm just going to decide, you know what, screw it, let's just, you know... Just, you know, put pictures up and talk about my thoughts because the film still is out in theatres and it's still new. So I'm not going to really show too much, but there will be spoilers in here just so people know. There will be spoilers and images so from the actual movie. So just to keep that in mind. But anyways, today's video will be talking and discussing the spoilers and the plot to Godzilla and Kong, the New Empire. Because of Godzilla Kong, the New Empire, as we follow Kong in Hollow Earth, who is extremely lonely. However, up in the surface, Godzilla is just doing his thing. However, he is preparing for something that big that is going to happen. Kong also needs to prepare as well, as he is journeys into Hollow Earth. However, this isn't until Kong finds an army of Kongs, as well as the ruler of the army, Scar King. It isn't until Scar King's evil plan is revealed, which leads Godzilla and Kong to team up to face against Scar King. And that's pretty much all for Godzilla Kong, the new empire without giving any spoilers. So just so people know, I'll be talking about the entire story in this video, and I will be discussing some stuff that is in the movie. So spoilers, you've been warned right here. I'll put it on the screen right here. So yeah, spoilers everyone. Best to run out of this video like Godzilla and Kong, because we're going to start spoilers. So anyway, let's just first off with Godzilla Kong The New Empire and what I thought of it. Well, the new entry in the MonsterVerse, Godzilla Kong The New Empire, seems to be the most talked about movie during the week. Which is really surprising, because I thought that, you know, this movie would get destroyed in the box office. However, it's actually really successful. It's been like $380 million worldwide. Which that is incredible, especially when Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, another Empire movie, had just released the week when Godzilla X Kong The New Empire released. I know that the critic score doesn't really matter, but this is, good. This is so far the second lowest critic score in the MonsterVerse, with it having a 54% over King of the Monsters. But the audience score is 91%, which is very successful with the audience. But those are so far the critical reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. So overall, Godzilla Kong the Empire is doing very well so far. Now, it's the only up to time that will tell if this movie will live up to the hype and also would be entertaining and something that I'll put on the TV for a lot in the f for a lot of times over and over again, rewatch value in the future. So far, I'm not too sure about that. But anyways, what are my opinions on Godzilla Kong the New Empire? So far, Honestly, you guys, I actually really enjoyed Godzilla Kong The New Empire. I found this to be entertaining as hell for my first watch. However, my second watch, I did kind of pick up some of the criticisms with the film. And that is mostly due to the human side, the story, all that. But, I mean, and also non-stop monster action, which I think was awesome. But I still think... Now, maybe you could have put a bit of, you know, more humans in it. But that was just, you know, for my second viewing. But anyway, I'll talk about the spoilers now and the, the entire story. But so far, I actually really enjoyed Godzilla Kong The New Empire. I think this is an entertaining, fun movie that will be rewatched in time. But, you know, only time will tell for that. But anyways, guys, we're going to dive into the spoilers to Godzilla Kong the new empire so spoilers you've been warned so we first start the film in hollow earth which we get the first shot from the trailers which we've all seen of kong running away from the wart dogs which are these dog-like creatures that are chasing after kong in the hollow earth kong does grab on one of the wart dogs and rips the wart dog in half to shreds and it's obviously green blood everywhere just like the um, war bat in godzilla versus kong Pretty much a homage to that scene. Honestly, I kind of like the war dogs. I especially like the way they look, but they're only in that one scene. Anyway, Kong heads back to his lair and starts eating one of the war dogs' body. However, we get to see, yes, my boy, Doug. Doug makes a return. However, he's only in this one scene, which takes only a second. So he only shows up to just grab the war dogs' body and head away. Anyways... We go back to Kong, who is extremely lonely and also has a bad tooth problem, which we Kong needs to see the dentist. But up in the surface world in Rome, we see Godzilla in his pre-evolved form fight none other than Scylla, 
Yes, Scylla makes a return. I never expected that one of the King of the Monsters monsters to show up in the in this movie. And well, Scylla does. And while it's only a, a few seconds, it's still awesome to see Scylla back but, and in the Monsterverse film and actually utilized as well. However, Godzilla defeats Scylla very quickly with a blast of his atomic breath and pretty much yellow blood glow goes literally everywhere. And Godzilla roars leaving to the title card of the film. Now I'm going to start to talk about the characters to Godzilla Kong The New Empire, which there are less characters in this movie compared to all the other MonsterVerse films. There are only four main protagonist characters in this movie, with the main one being Rebecca Hall reprising her role as Dr. Eileen Andrews, which, in my opinion, I thought she was all right. Like, I wouldn't say she was... I think she was better in Godzilla vs. Kong, but I just thought she was all right here. I mean, she has a new haircut, I guess that's all I can really say about her. Anyway, next up we have Brian Tyree Henry, who, reprise, who reprises his role as Bernie Hayes, which, in my opinion, I didn't like his character in here that much. I thought he was a useless character and just, you know, was, you know, put in just, you know, because he had to be in the film. Like, I thought he was um, all right in this film compared to Godzilla vs. Kong, but I just kind of felt like his character just wasn't really needed for the story like he was just put there just f to be there so it was pretty much a useless character for the story but i think the new character here and one of my favorites is dan steven who plays trapper trapper is like this 80s kaiju doctor dude i am not kidding like this is an insane looney tunes like character he honestly looks like ace ventura you know pet detective you know the jim that jim carrey movie he looks a lot like him and he even wears these like the exact same t-shirt as him well not the exact same but i mean trapper he was quite a fun character but and probably one of the best characters like in the movie but it really sums up just this movie, like, of how crazy it is, and especially his character. Like, it's so crazy and outlandish. But he was pretty much the most entertaining character in the entire story, in my opinion. Kaylee Hoddle returns as Gia, and I was looking forward to her because it would expand more on her story here. And while it does, especially with, you know, her meeting her um, the Iwi tribe, however... I kind of felt like her character was a bit useless compared to Godzilla vs. Kong in this movie. Like, I felt There like wasn't really that much to her character, except she was mostly a plot character. And plus, she had less interactions with Kong. There was only one scene with her with Kong. Or well, actually, I think there were two scenes with her with Kong, but that was really it. Like, there wasn't a lot of scenes with her with Kong in them, which was a bit disappointing, in my own opinion. Because I like her the scenes where she's with Kong and, you know, her interacting with Kong. So, I thought that was a bit of a disappointment there. We do get a scene in the film where Godzilla is facing off against two fighter jets, as well as feeding on nuclear energy. Godzilla is obviously prepared to fight something very huge that a lot of characters just always keep on telling us that Godzilla is prepared to fight something, which I thought was a bit annoying, but, you know, I think it definitely explain, explains why Godzilla is trying to get all-powerful and stuff. And, you know, trying to increase his levels and stuff. There is also a scene where Godzilla fights Tiamat. Yes, Tiamat is in the comic books and actually makes an appearance in the film, which is an amazing scene. However, my only problem is it lasts barely a minute, the battle. The battle wasn't even long. It took like a few seconds. Or well, actually, it didn't take any seconds at all. Godzilla just defeated um, Tiamat like that. Bam, like he's just dead. Like, it... That battle didn't even last longer than I thought it would. I thought that battle was very disappointing. But those were the only scenes of Godzilla at the start of the film. And then after that, he's just in hibernation, ready for his evolved form at the end of the movie. And then after that, that's pretty much all we see of Godzilla, which I think was very disappointing because we could have gotten more Godzilla scenes. Like, there could have been more stuff with the FOMO Godzilla, which I thought... Honestly, they kind of underutilized him at the beginning of the film. However, Godzilla will show up at the end of Kong, so all in all, it's not that bad, it's fine. Gia is at a monarch at school, I'm not kidding, a monarch school, where she ends up visualizing of what's going to happen in the future where Scar King and his evil plans. Kong also visualizes this as well. However, we don't see it, but we do see that Kong knows that it's about to happen. So Kong enters into the surface where he meets the dentist, or also known as Trapper, gives him his new tooth, which he has a metal tooth now, Kong, which honestly isn't in the rest of the movie except for one scene. But anyways, Kong gets his tooth replaced. Then 
Eileen Andrews, Trapper and also Bernie, as well as GR, make a trip to Hollow Earth to see what's going on. They follow Kong into the Hollow Earth portal and they pretty much split off now. Like the, the crew doesn't go along with Kong like they did in GVK. The crew is just doing their own thing whilst Kong explores all around by himself. But meanwhile, Kong enters into a foggy area where he meets another Kong. This Kong is Suko. Suko is pretty much the son of Kong, which I'm surprised that they put the son of Kong story into this um, movie. I mean, to be honest, Suko is actually fine in the film. Like, he's not a Baby Yoda situation where Legendary, you know, wants marketing with this guy. This time, he's just like a simple little creature, which I think, you know, you know what, Suko's fine. I think he was great in the film. Anyway, Kong tries to comfort the little Suko who is lost. However, Suko ends up attacking Kong. And this is where we get to see the, the other apes that are ruled by the Scar King. The apes pretty much attack Kong. However, Kong uses Suko as a bat. I am not literally kidding, but Kong literally like racks the apes with Suko. There's even one ape which trips over a cliff and um, Kong saves him. However, the ape betrays Kong and Kong pushes him off. So Suko joins Kong. However, he's a bit of a little bastard at the start, a little shit. So Kong doesn't kill him. There are some stuff where Suko tries to run off with run off and just go away, get away from Kong. But then Kong comes up to him and says, hey buddy, we got work to do. We also see a new monster and that's the Gator Snake as it's called. It's pretty much a giant serpent creature, which I thought was pretty cool, but Kong defeats in a second. Anyway, up to the humans, we do get to see the Iwi tribe return. That's really cool. The Iwi tribe, there's nothing really to say about them except that they're trying to stop the evil plan from Scar King. But anyway, moving on to the more interesting part, the monsters with Kong. Matt's Kong runs into the army of apes. That's right, the army of Kongs that have been... It's uh, not unknown where how long they've been under there for. Probably ever since Skull Island got wiped out by the storm. There is some awesome scenes between Kong and the apes where he interacts with them. And it looks really cool. And Kong even gets to punch a few and stuff. But... This all comes down to the ruler who notices Kong's presence. That's right, we're talking about Scar King. And Scar King, I'm kind of mixed on. While he is a cool looking villain, and I especially like his posture, like his posture, he literally is, and his head like is literally like down, and like he looks all lanky and stuff. Like it, he look, he's, he's kind, of, kind of funny if you watch the movie. Like his posture is so hilariously looking. But my only problem with Scar King is that he doesn't really that much have a plan. And that's pretty much with all the marketing and stuff. Like, Scar King, he could just go out on Earth any time and destroy and wreak havoc. There is, like, I think there is something where Scar King fought Godzilla, and then Scar King lost, and that's why he can't go to the surface world to wreak havoc. But I think Scar King isn't really that bad of a, of really that threatening of a villain, especially because I think Kong and Godzilla, or especially Godzilla, could take on Kong, um, Scar King any time of the day, I think. Like, Scar, Godzilla, Scar King would get wrecked by Godzilla. Like, there's no way in that. And especially Shimo as well. But anyway, Scar King takes a look at Kong and sees his uh, metal tooth and knows how funny looking it is. That is until Kong is pissed off at him and what he's been planning. So, Kong grabs his axe out and there's a fight scene between Kong and Scar King. And it's amazing, at this fight scene. This leads Kong to be a bit injured. However, Scar King reveals... Another monster that he's been keeping. That's right. It's the secret titan, Shimo. Shimo, honestly, was kind of a disappointing villain. Whilst I do like the design, I don't think she was really that utilized well in the film. She's kind of like this tragic character, or tragic monster, sorry. And by the way, Shimo's a girl, by the way, a woman. So, yeah, that's the gender situation done. But... I thought she was going to be one of the villains in the film joining Scar King, but she only turned out to be this tragic character that was being commanded by Scar King. Also, I don't feel like the marketing team did really well with Shimo. You can still see her in some of the trailers, and of course, Playmates released the figure. But anyway, Shimo freezes Kong's hand, and Kong returns with Suko to see the humans. This is where we get an interaction between Kong and Gia, which I think was a really cute moment there. And then... They see that Kong has a frostbite arm, which he's about, you know, to get frostbite. And so Tracker decides, well, let's just give him an arm. But wait, how are we going to get his arm? Wait, 
We ha- we just have a, like a station nearby that we can transport Kong's arm on um, robotic arm onto him, the beast glove, and it's like, oh, that was such a huge coincidence. Like, oh, we just have a giant hand in the like a, a giant robotic hand in our sis station. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Like, they just made that that plot just to sell toys anyway. But anyway, Kong gets his robotic hand, which is called the beast glove, the B E A S T glove. And we get cut back to Godzilla, who's in hibernation still, in the ice. And this is when Godzilla starts to break loose and break free from the ice, revealing his new pinkish Barbenheimer evolved form. I know a lot of people are mixed on this Godzilla, but I'm not going to ramble on it too much. Anyway, Kong goes to Egypt uh, through the Hollow Earth, which Godzilla is waiting for him or chasing after him. So... Kong is trying to stop Godzilla so that Godzilla could go back to Hollow Earth and join him to fight Scar King and Shimo. However, Godzilla doesn't follow his orders, just like what happened last in the last movie, and Godzilla attacks Kong, and they start fighting for a little bit. The fight takes about a minute or two, but I think Kong, obviously, I knew that Kong was going to win this battle when he becomes victorious at the end, which, honestly, there is no um, real winners in this battle, because this is just a short minute battle. Bet Kong wins, I would say, in this battle, in this little battle. So that was a nice um, a revenge for Kong after what happened last film. But the fight does eventually break up, and the one that breaks it up is Mothra. Yep, Mothra makes a return from King of the Monsters, and I thought she was all right in the film. I thought that she actually was great. I thought she was better than King of the Monsters a bit, I think. Well, actually... I'm not too sure which one I'd prefer, but so far, I think she's used in the story very well, obviously, to communicate with Godzilla and Kong to stop fighting. Then, Scar King and his gang of apes and Shimo are, try- are going to um, dis- disrupt the surface world uh, and stop Kong. However, Trapper uses these um, pterosaur-like creatures to stop them, but this is until we get the scene of Godzilla and Kong running, that most iconic shot, the iconic scene of Godzilla and Kong running together straight heading towards Shimo and Scar King. And I mean, this this scene's iconic. I love this scene. Uh, I was cheering up in the theater, especially when Kong, like, rode Godzilla's back. Like, that was so awesome. But anyway, we get to see the final battle between Scar King, Shimo, Godzilla, and Kong. And honestly, I really wanted to see the Hollow Earth battle, a Hollow Earth battle in GVK, and this movie definitely delivers. The Hollow Earth battle looks amazing, and everyone's just flying on screen like... I know lots of critics... I think I know why lots of people would drop this to 54%. Like, it's obviously crazy. The battle between all these uh, monsters just um, flying around and stuff. So yeah, monsters are flying and shit. That fight scene was so much fun. Pretty much a zero gravity fight. That was amazing. But we also get to see Scar King and Shimo enter into the surface world to start the Ice Age area. That means... Shimo's blasting into the sky, ready to start the Ice Age. However, Godzilla and Kong obviously need to deal with this menace. And so, this is what leads to the finale, the final battle between Scar King and Kong and Godzilla and Shimo. They have a little bit of a battle in Rio de Janeiro, and I don't think this is definitely one of the best battles. Like, it doesn't really matter who dies here. Like, it's just fun. Like, it's so entertaining, the final battle. Suko also joins the battle. He grabs an a- Kong's axe and goes into the surface world and using his axe destroys Scar King's his whip that has the crystal that controls Shimo. Shimo turns normal and then freezes Scar King. Yes, yeah, Scar King is frozen until Kong picks Scar King up and bashes him on the ground destroying K- Scar King once and for all. We then move on to the humans where Gia's deciding if she wants to go with the Iwi tribe or Eileen. But then she chooses Eileen. Then we say farewell to the King of the Monsters as he sleeps in the Roman Colosseum. How wonderful. Kong, Shimo, and Suko go back to the Kong Lair to tell the Kongs their master has been defeated and that now they are set free. And that is pretty much all for Godzilla Kong, The New Empire, the main entire story and plot to the film. And in my opinion, man, that was such a fun movie. That was definitely an epic inclusion to the MonsterVerse. I really did enjoy it. However, I would say my only biggest problem with the story is the story, some of the characters, and the decisions that were made during the writers in the film. Like, 
I especially don't like, you know, Kong's Beast glove on how, you know, he got it. Also, the villains I thought were all right. I did like Shimo and Scar King. However, I do feel like their characters were a bit butchered in my own opinion. They could have been, especially Scar King. Like, I reckon... Honestly, I reckon Scar King shouldn't have got killed in the f at the ending of the film. I feel like Scar King should be a main villain present in the next movie. Like, he should probably free, I don't know, Destroyer or something like that in the next Godzilla X Kong, f Godzilla X Kong 3. But obviously, Scar King's dead, so that's never going to happen. I thought that they wasted Scar King, and they wasted that potential, in my own opinion. But Scar King's still a great villain. I mean, at least he wasn't Giganotosaurus and Dominion levels of trash. But that's pretty much all the criticisms I have with the film. Also, Adam Wingard, who directed The Last Godzilla vs. Kong, directs this one and also is um, a part of this film. And I thought that he actually did a good job with here. But I do think, especially with the Hollow Earth scenes, there were some shaky cam. But that's obviously to show the monsters, you know, fighting each other and duking it out. It wasn't really that annoying. But anyways, that's pretty much all it for Godzilla Kong The New Empire. This is my spoiler talk. What did you guys think? Honestly, I think Godzilla Kong The New Empire is a fun film. And guys, do not compare this to Minus One. This is totally not... Um, this is totally not a Minus One movie. Like, obviously, Minus One is its own movie, and it's obviously the better movie. Honestly, I'll give Godzilla Kong The New Empire a 7 out of 10. This is definitely one I do recommend for all MonsterVerse fans. And if you don't have the chance, just go see it right now. I mean, you've already technically seen it because I talked about the plot. But anyway, thank you all so much for being on this journey with me to explore the MonsterVerse. Yep. The legacy of the MonsterVerse reviews is finally over. It's been like six movies in six weeks. I want to thank you all so much for sticking around and watching these videos. Thank you all very much. I will do a ranking of all the MonsterVerse films. So technically, I'm not done with the MonsterVerse yet. But anyway, what do you guys think of Godzilla Kong The New Empire? Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next adventure.